So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by my colleague Eamon Khan. And we're here, <laughs> we're here, you see Eamon's already excited. We're here to review the news that broke earlier this evening, and that's that Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk, rival world heavyweight champions, have finally signed contracts to meet in an undisputed clash, the first ever undisputed heavyweight title clash in the four belt era. And Eamon, what was your first reaction on hearing the news? Look, I'm excited to a degree, to a point. Let's get the positive stuff out of the way. Look, movement. We've got movement now on an undisputed heavyweight clash, a fight we've wanted, wanted to see materialise for a long, long time in any form, whichever heavyweights were com uh, competing for it. Uh, undisputed heavyweight clash is something that boxing needs as goes boxing as goes the heavyweight division is a cliche I might have jumbled it up a little bit in my excitement uh, to hastily get it out of my mouth but that's it really there, there is a level of excitement here to see things moving towards some date but then just dig a little bit and look a little bit closer we've had so many false dawns with undisputed heavyweight fights with big heavyweight fights that it's a little bit hard for the boxing fan or boxing pundit or people maybe in boxing, if my finger on the pulse is correct, to get fully, to throw both my feet in here. My big toe is in at the moment. I'm excited. I want to see just that little bit more. Well, thank you for that image, um, first of all, <laughs> after a long day. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think the fact that, obviously I've got doubts as well, I'm not a complete idiot, but having seen it tweeted out, posted out by not just Queensbury, but also Alex Krasuk, the promoter of uh, Alexander Usyk, that gives me some reassurance that it's not, as some people have claimed, a publicity stunt to help uh, increase interest in Fury's fight with Francis and Garnu at the end of next month. So the fact that Krasik seems to be on board, they haven't just said they're in talks or, or they've made a verbal agreement. They're saying that contracts have actually been signed. So that's obviously a, a you know a good indicator that we're quite far down the road. Uh, Riyadh season, of course, uh, uh, you know heavily referenced on the fight poster that's come out. They're the group in Saudi Arabia who are promoting predominantly the uh, Fury and Garnu clash. And we saw earlier this week, a lot of undercard fights have been announced for that. Curiously, the uh, Bacoli takan fight was left off it and then got its own announcement. I'm not sure quite what happened there. Um, but yeah, so the fact that they're doing that and it's only December 23rd was the date first mooted for Fury Usyk. That's only about eight weeks after the Nganu fight with the same promoter, we're led to believe. So that's an encouraging sign. I know it also said it could end up being in January. I'm assuming that's a, you know, a, a cover all just in case Fury suffers some sort of injury against Nganu. I don't think many people would consider it likely that an upset's going to take place. I know Eddie Hearn believes the Southern Area champion Johnny Fisher would beat uh, Nganu within a round. <laughs> That's something we can talk about maybe another time. But I think there is a chance with uh, Nganu's ungainly style and lack of experience in traditional boxing. Cuts are obviously a risk and injuries also, um, even if Fury Kansas to a victory there. So it's, it's you know reasonable that it could end up being in January. But that's what we were talking about anyway, wasn't it? Originally, earlier in the year when negotiations were happening, that Fury Usyk could take place the end of this year, beginning of next year, same as uh, Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, which now looks like it's fallen by the wayside. But the big turning point in this seems to be the emergence of Riyadh uh, season as the preferred promoter in that region for the uh, Saudi royal family and the people who've got the money involved to make these fights happen. Because Usyk, as we know, signed with Skills Challenge Promotions, that seems to have receded into the background now, that operation, with Riyadh season coming to the fore. And if reports are to be believed, Usyk is actually making a bit more money now than he was first um, set to when the negotiations happened earlier this year. Yeah, no, that's great. Let's take that from the top of what you just mentioned there. Great to see two fight as well. Look, that was a big bone of contention, uh, maybe more so from Tyson Fury's side, or whoever's side, depending on what narrative you're following here, but money was an issue in terms of the part and, and what was being dealt out for an undisputed heavyweight fight. It came down to, at one point, Usyk said, look, I'll take 30% and let's get this fight going. And then all of a sudden the fight didn't happen. But look, I remember speaking to Russ Amber and he said, look, if we're going to make the fight, it's going to happen. And now it seems like the fight is going to happen. But look, if both fighters are making what what they've agreed to, to get in 
look, an, an area which can provide the money right now to get this over the line. That's brilliant. It does seem like there's been a shift in power in terms of, well, it's more than just seem. It's, it looks, it's evident that that's happened now in Saudi Arabia. Consequences are, look, unfortunately, one one business, like you said, falls to the wayside. Another business takes over and we get the fights that we we're looking to get. So there's a boxing fan. You're pretty happy about it. And look, as a, as this Riyadh season, like you mentioned, kicking off with the Fury and Garnu to maybe capture in some casual audience and then ending with all those eyes, hopefully, still on Tyson Fury, <laughs> if, which is not a big if, he comes through Fury, uh, Fury uh, sorry, Francis and Garnu. Uh, then he's going straight into that fight with Alexander Usyk and uh, a big, big moment for, for boxing hand, boxing fans and combat sports fans. I'm looking forward to interviewing Frank Warren at some point and just asking him what the current situation is with Daniel Dubois' appeal to the WBA for an immediate rematch with Alexander Usyk. I can imagine the, the kind of uh, determination to secure that rematch may well have um, diminished somewhat now this news has been announced. And I imagine the narrative may also change about just how uh, well Dubois did and how uh, flawed Usyk was, apparently, in that performance. But jokes aside, I mean, yeah, it's it's a mouthwatering fight and one we've wanted for a long time. Both undefeated. You could argue in both cases that perhaps they shouldn't be. I know Tyson Fury gets John McDermott steeped in history now. But, you know, anyone who's watched that fight, I think, would agree that Fury got the fortunate end of the decision that night and then you've got Usyk what happened with Dubois but aside from that we haven't seen Usyk particularly close to losing I know Maris Breedis pushed him close um, but this is two guys at the very top of their game right now they've proven themselves to be number one and number two whichever way round you have it in the heavyweight division Usyk of course former undisputed cruiserweight champion as well um, and Fury just with his size and uh, unique skill set for someone of that stature as well it's such a unique challenge for any heavyweight out there, but particularly a smaller guy who's come up from cruiserweight that the intangibles make this fight even more attractive than the bare statistics. And yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, no, I can't wait either. It's a, a fight that kind of excites. And I think I've certainly already flip-flopped in thinking as to who I'd favour in the fight. And I'm, I'm sure I will until I have a certainty of a of, of a prediction on, on fight night, which usually comes to me. I might even stick by this rule that I, that I go by, which is whenever a big fight like that is made, I might forget predictions. I might just go and enjoy the fight. What a what a weird concept, enjoying the yeah. fight. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy yeah. talk. Yeah, I'll, get, I'll, I'll dash that out of my mind. <laughs> but look, um, yeah, no, look, it's... It's an undisputed fight as well, in which we're seeing, I think you said this here, two, the consensus number one and number two, not like, uh, you know, well, Dante Wilder, who's knocked out loads of opponents and could have, you know, foreseeably been in this position, fighting another person in, in the heavyweight division for that crown. This, this is the creme de la creme. This is the elite in the, in the, in the business, uh, vying out for the title. And I think whenever you've got that in the mix as well, when boxing fans, when hardcore fans, when the casuals all mix together for an event like we saw with Spence and Crawford, it can only hopefully deliver. Yeah, and I, I favour Fury um, to win the fight. If I had to pick, I, I would pick Fury to win. But it's not one of those fights where I look at Usyk and say, well, I can't see any route to victory for him. I can easily see a path for either man to win this fight. You know, I can see Usyk Darting in and out, frustrating Fury, catching him with his faster hands. You know, Fury has fast hands for a heavyweight, but overall, Usyk has the faster hand speed. And I could see him frustrating Fury and, and outboxing, not outboxing, sorry, outworking him, certainly, to a points decision. Um, I don't see him stopping Fury necessarily. But then on the flip side, I could see Fury easily kind of imposing his size, his strength, his length as well, at the risk of, you know, sounding strange with that one. But you know, his long shot, picking Usyk off on the way in. And then when he does make his way past those long levers, leaning on, wrestling him around, sapping his strength. Um, and I think stylistically, as I said earlier, I think the, the stature and the style of Fury poses a challenge for any heavyweight out there. Um, and even any heavyweight throughout history, I think, because of that, that, you know, unorthodox style and size. But I think Usyk particularly will not have had any experience of someone of that nature and stature as a cruiserweight 
also far at heavyweight. Whereas I think Fury, pretty much everyone he fights is going to be smaller than him, perhaps more nimble and more agile as well. So it might be a bit more of an unknown quantity or, a, or something he's not used to, unaccustomed to for Usyk than it is for Fury. But I, I could see a case for both men uh, winning, not both men winning, either man winning, um, or even a draw, of course. I'm sure that'll be decent odds with the bookies, it usually is. Um, and would set up a lucrative rematch, not saying the fix is in or anything, but, you know, you never know. Um, but, yeah, I, I would pick Fury to win, but it wouldn't shock me if Usyk pulled it off. And we are going to get an undisputed number one in the division. And there's the history of it being the first four-belt uh, undisputed heavyweight champion. But it's more the fact that we will get an undisputed number one heavyweight, probably for the first time since what? Lennox Lewis, perhaps? Um, and I think that's that's something to be applauded. Yeah, I don't know if this is a sign, by the way, because I'm pretty sure it used to go by the, mon the moniker of the cat, right? And there's a cat currently meowing outside my window. Maybe that's a sign of something, <laughs> an, an omen, as it were. Oh, no, is it off. your cat? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> the neighbor's cat. That, it's the neighbor's cat, so... <laughs> Uh, but, Shut yeah. the cat out of the window so you can do this video. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but yeah, no, look, um, I know when it comes to Tyson Fury and, and you know, you're kind of mentioning about the, the, the stars that they faced before and you can dig out a Tyson Fury quote to suit any argument that you want to make because he's, he's said so much in the past. But I'm pretty sure Tyson Fury has said in earnest uh, that Steve Cunningham is someone who gave him real problems and a cruiserweight who... I wouldn't say was the most agile, but he was smaller than him, had a bit more agility about him, gave him, gave him some looks to think about and put him on the canvas. And I think that's yeah. what we're looking at to the highest level uh, in the sport right now in Alexander Usyk from that cruiserweight uh, division, from a good skilled background who has multiple looks in his arsenal, has heart, has courage and can pack a punch as well. It doesn't take... It doesn't take too much for Fury to go down. We've seen that beforehand. It can take a big wallop as well, too, but he's risen up from that as well. The question marks are definitely more around Alexander Usyk, and some might argue it, this is kind of his real acid test, in a way, at heavyweight, um, if you really want to be hypercritical about it, uh, but maybe fair enough on it. But if he passes up on... If he, if he passes this test... Uh, against Tyson Fury then we're looking at an all-time great here we might have been looking at I think we're looking at that with with both of them if if they do win the fight um so yeah look at very intriguing this this is one of the things where you start getting excited and you want to keep building and then maybe the rug gets pulled at some point because uh something well, else it's the guy who lands a haymaker you know. back, back at square one again so I'm trying to keep myself you know a little bit reserved with it but yeah no look at uh, hopefully this this does land. I just want to ask you quickly, Danny. Like Tyson Fury has always kind of maintained that he won't get the credit he deserves for beating Alexander Usyk because he's a middleweight. And all the kind of cliches that Tyson Fury has rolled out in the past, he won't get the, get the credit for that. I disagree completely. The hardcore boxing fans will definitely give him the credit. Will the I will the wider audience give him the credit if he wins as he plans to do so? I mean, he hasn't done himself any favours in that regard by disparaging Usyk so much in the last few months, maybe even a year now. I think, you know, he's done that for a reason in terms of negotiating power, but now it could hurt him in terms of legacy and, and reputational damage after the fight if he does win. Because the casual audience, which is the one Fury appeals to most of all, has been force-fed regularly over a period of time. Usyk's a middleweight. Usyk can't punch. Usyk's not on Tyson Fury's level. Usyk hasn't got as good a resume as Tyson. You know, it's on and on. And whether you agree or disagree with those statements is irrelevant. If that's what Fury's telling his audience, then that's what they're going to believe. And there might have to be a real kind of restructuring of that narrative in the next like eight weeks or 12 weeks. But I think from the hardcore fraternity, certainly he'll get the credit because who else is out there that Tyson Fury can beat? Like he's beaten Klitschko on away soil. He's beaten Wilder on away soil. Joshua has been, you know, discredited to an extent after two defeats to Usyk. Uh, he's beaten kind of fringe people, Dillian White, for example, who was probably a top five or six heavyweight when Fury defeated him. So who else could he be in the current landscape where people would sit up, take notice and give him huge credit for it? I don't think there is anyone. You know, he's, the other guy is the one who holds three of the four major world titles and has never been beaten, has won most of his fights on away soil. 
I mean, he's the biggest challenge for Fury. There's no doubt about that. And I think this is the first fight, probably since Wilder won, where people will consider Fury's opponent having a realistic chance of victory. I don't think many people thought White was going to beat him or Chisora was going to beat him or even Wilder in the second and third fights. Um, but I think this is the first time where there's people already predicting an Usyk victory. And, and that in itself shows that Fury deserves a lot of credit if he comes through. Yeah, I agree with you as well. And I think uh, just to add to what you said there, um, I think at one of Joshua's highest points, obviously before the Ruiz fight, um, and then taking on Alexander Usyk for the first time round, a lot of casuals will have tuned in for that fight. A lot of casual fans will have watched that fight. So they'll have seen and become acclimatized to him against Chisora as well. Let's not forget that one. They'll have seen him fight Chisora, who's a fan favorite in the UK. They'll have mm. seen him fight Anti Joshua, who's carried boxing for the past decade or so in the UK. Um, and we've, they'll have seen him beat him as well, uh, which is the most important part. So I think Tyson Fury should in fact get the credit from from the wider boxing audiences should he get the victory. I, I don't think that is much of an issue. That must have been, like you mentioned there, a bit of a bargaining chip. But yeah, like you said, definitely have to be of a switch of narrative um, heading into this one to partially build back up the, the, the fight. And kind of a reverse question on the flip side of the coin. If Usyk defeats Fury, does he have a strong case to then be pound for pound number one? Uh... Hmm. I think so. I think so. I don't, I, don't, I, I would. I wouldn't look to. You. 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 What to take the achievement away from him? You'd. You'd argue saying, "Well, I want to see it still seem in while what a fight with John Wilder, which is a fair request. Uh, I want to see him maybe take on one of his mandatories or something like, or defend against someone to get, uh, rather than Tyson Fury, which might be a fair request too. But when you think about it. Or at least when I think about it, I would I be picking Usyk against John Taylor Wilder? Yes. Would I be picking Usyk against any of the other heavyweights if he's beaten anti Joshua or a Tyson Fury? Yes. So, and I, I'd pick him quite favorably in those fights. So, I think he'd be a betting favorite with the bookmakers against any one bar Fury. That's right. Yeah. So, I certainly would be handing out that credit, but there would be I, I can completely see can completely see there being a lot of detractors saying, no, you have to come through this fight, that fight, to get that status. Definitely. I get that point. Yeah, it's a tricky one. A lot of people don't like to see heavyweights in the pound-for-pound -pound ranks at all. But I think Usyk, if he's dominated two divisions, which if he beat Fury, he would have dominated Cruiser and Heavy, become undisputed at both. I mean, obviously, if Jamel Charlo pulls off a massive shock at the weekend and becomes undisputed in two divisions simultaneously, I mean, that's a pretty strong case as well. And then we've still got Crawford coming off a huge win over Spence. But yeah, I think Usyk deserves to be considered right up there. Top 10 now. But I mean, if he beats Fury, I, I think it's hard to see past him as number one. A couple of points as well, or at least one that's uh, striking in my mind that I want to mention. Um, I wonder if Strictly, is there a rematch clause in this fight? Now, it would make sense that there would be maybe on um, the Fury yeah. side, side being Tyson Fury. Uh, but Maybe there's one where there's, they've agreed to do a two-fight deal. I want to know if that's the case here. Is there a rematch clause here? Um, well, that was what kind of reportedly derailed the talks last time out, wasn't it? Ultimately, there was a lot of things that they were, you know, unsure about. But that was the final straw, if you like. And, you know, Fury demanded the rematch clause be taken out quite late on in negotiations, or at least half of that rematch clause. You would think there would be one on Fury's side, even if he doesn't want it. You'd think the people who work with him would ensure... His interests are protected in that way. If Riyadh sees and are the lead promoters on this, you don't know how much power Usyk has in the negotiations, despite having those three belts. Um, but yeah, you would hope there's a rematch clause just in case the first fight ends contentiously or controversially, you know, or if there's a draw and we don't get a, an undisputed champion, that'd be a shame after all the build up mm -hmm. to not make history in that way. So yeah, I would hope in this case, I'm not always in favour of rematch clauses, but in this one, I would hope that, that, that one exists. No, I hope so. Well, I'll throw another question at you as well, Danny, or just what, while we're spitballing about it. Would you would you call Tyson Fury's potential victory over Alexander Usyk a greater win than his victory over Vladimir Klitschko? Oh, God. Um, no. No, probably not. 
Um, in terms of kind of stature, it is because he'd been the first undisputed heavyweight champion of the four belt era. But no, I don't think so because it was on a away turf. This will be a neutral territory. Klitschko had been undefeated in however many years. He was a dominant force at heavyweight rather than a former cruiserweight. He was seen by many as being unbeatable. I know a lot of people now like to rewrite history and say, oh, he was clearly on the slide when he fought Fury. But I think in the fight previous, uh, he fought Kubrat Pulev and, and pretty much destroyed him. So, I mean, he wasn't he wasn't looking too shabby. Um, Fury, yeah, he, he was an underdog. He did it on a way turf. He'll be going into the Usyk fight as the favourite. Um, so I think it's very different in terms of the kind of mental uh, aspect of it and how much he had to overcome. And I even think the first Wilder fight, if he, if the decision had gone his way, that would have been a huge victory as well on his resume, simply because of where he'd come from, how much weight he'd put on, the issues he'd had uh, in his time off, mental health and drugs and everything else, to come back from all of that and then do what he did against Wilder. So I think they're both outstanding victories. Um, Usyk brings a lot more in terms of rewards. Um, and I think he deserves a huge amount of credit if he's to defeat him. But I wouldn't put it above the Klitschko win. Fair enough. And the other point I wanted to make as well is whether you would, and I'll answer this question first, I was just thinking about it. Let's say there's no rematch clauses. Let's say it's just a one-off fight. Would you think that either fighter, whoever wins, would sail off to the sunset and retire after claiming the Undisputed Crown? I'd kind of say yes for Tyson. No, sorry, I'd say no for Tyson Fury, but with a little caveat for both of them and then potentially uh, yes for Alexander Usyk. Yes, for Alexander Usyk, because he's beaten anti-Joshua. He then beaten Tyson Fury. I don't think he really needs to fight Wilder or anyone anyone else. His caveat is the same caveat for Tyson Fury in that there's always money in, in, in this area and you can stand to make quite a bit of money in another match if they, if they want you back, which they probably would want an undisputed heavyweight crowned in their region back for another fight, I'd imagine. And Tyson Fury... No, I don't think so. I don't think he retires if he if he beats Alexander Usyk because I still I I genuinely think that he wants to do that anti Joshua fight. I think he wants to give that fight to the fans. I think he does want to do it, and of course the money involved too in that fight. Yeah, I mean I think Tyson Fury's earned a huge amount of money, so that goes in favor of him perhaps retiring. But again, I agree with you. I think he wants the Joshua fight. I think with Usyk, he hasn't earned money commensurate with his talent and accomplishments yet. I think when they signed with Skills Challenge, he probably thought that was a step in that direction. Earned, what was it, $6 million against Daniel Dubois? I think he'll probably have felt he deserved a bit more than that, considering he's a three-belt champion and he's undefeated. And, you know, he was the A-side in that fight. So I think even if he beats Fury, and it would be a crowning achievement in Usyk's career, I'm not sure he's earned quite enough money that he'd want to think, right, I'm set for life now. I'm ready to sail off into the sunset. I think it'd be... The peak of his career in terms of earning power at that point, he's just beaten Fury. He's a you know two weight undisputed world champion. Even if he's not fighting, you know a rematch with Fury would be incredibly lucrative. A Wilder fight would be incredibly lucrative also, and he might even look into crossover fights like Fury already has. There's still a lot of money to be made for him. But not only that, I think as long as the the conflict in Ukraine continues, I think he's got another reason to fight. You know to inspire his people to f make them feel like he's in the struggle alongside them. He's a symbol um, for that uh, struggle and that independence um, that they're trying to achieve or trying to uh, retain uh, more accurately. So I think that's a big uh, part of it as well. And that conflict doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon, unfortunately. And I think that will play into Usyk's thinking also. Yeah, and that also unlocks in my mind a potential a potential fight that might stick around or exhibition about that might stick around. I know that uh, Vladimir Klitschko has always kind of toyed around, maybe coming back in the ring in some sort of form or fashion, always kept himself in great shape. And that's another way to kind of keep the eyes and focus on on Ukraine. But whatever happens, and we've got a poster right now, that's all working. Let's see, <laughs> see where we've gone off of just the poster, Danny. <laughs> on a Friday night, we should be out and talking about it with with our mates with a few drinks in our hands uh, instead of talking to each other. Uh, but no, um, that's that's what a poster for a heavyweight undisputed clash can do. But we'll find out more details during. <laughs> they've done well. Uh, they've, we'll find out more details. All will be announced during or after that Fury and Garnu fight. Whether the fight's not happening at all <laughs> or the fight's on, um, pending the outcome of that fight or exhibition, whatever it is. Well, you would hope, not just for our reassurance, but to promote the fight that if Fury is victorious, that Usyk gets into the ring afterwards, you know, mm -hmm. and they and they have a 
kind of stare down or whatever they want to do straight away. You know, we that's got to be the the reason. You know, it's in Riyadh. The next one's going to be there presumably as well. That's what they've said. So yeah, you would hope they'll use that as a, a promotional tool for the next one. A bit like you know we're wrestling fans. A bit like they use a pay per view to promote the next pay per view or the TV show to promote the pay per view. So that's what we want to see. I hear that, hear that completely. Great stuff. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Please do like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Keep tuned to Seconds Out. We've got loads of great content coming over the weekend. We're at two UK shows, plus Canelo Charlo in the US. So we'll have loads of stuff from out there. Yeah, when two become free, as the Spice Girls almost sang. <laughs> um, and yeah, we'll we'll try and keep you updated on the uh, Fury and Garnu details. Uh, sorry, Fury and Garnu. Yeah, that too, but Fury, Usyk predominantly. Um, and let you know what's going on with that as soon as we're aware. Cheers, guys. Thank you.